Hello, hello. I usually use a mug press when I'm doing my sublimated mugs, but I wanted to test out using a convection oven. So, so I did a live demonstration on um, Instagram, trying it out for my very first time. And I used a silicone sleeve as well as the shrink wrap sleeve because I wanted to see which one would work better. So I wanted to share it with you. I apologize for the lack of eye contact. This was an Instagram live that I did, but it had so much good content. I really just wanted you to be able to see how it all worked out. And Throughout the video, I answer a lot of questions about sublimation, so you'll get a lot of new information that you might not have known. So check it out. Um, remember, if you like the video, click that thumbs up button and stay tuned for a little surprise at the end of the video. So let's get crafty. I mean, I'm doing this thing for the very first time, so I figure I'm gonna wear my I Survive 2020 shirt because if I survive 2020, I should be able to survive going live with this project that I have never done before. So um, I'm excited. So what I'm doing today is making a sublimated mug, two mugs, uh, I'm doing the 15 ounces. And I, I've done sublimated mugs, many of them, but I've never done them in the convection oven. So it is warming up right now. And what I'm gonna be doing is testing out to see if this, um, what is this the shrink wrap sleeve works better or the silicone sleeve um i've never used either one so you guys are going to see today if they work um so i've got my heat gloves got my convection oven and my heat gun so i think what i'm going to do is get started because they're going to have to go in the oven for 12 minutes so during that 12 minutes, I will be able to answer any questions that you might have about sublimation or anything else you want to know. So I'm going to get started so we can put them in the oven. So I've got my heat tape here. I like to just um, take a few pieces off and put it on the table so that it is easy for me to access it. So I'm going to cut a few pieces. So I've done some research on how this is supposed to work. And I'm going to go with that and we're going to see if it really does. Um, let's see. So I got my tape. I, print, I designed a couple um, things to do for today. So I have two. They're the same. It just says live life in color. And I wanted to do something that had a lot of color to see how bright it was going to show up. Um, so those are already printed out and I've actually already cut them to size so that they are ready to go. So let's see. Hi, thanks everybody for joining me today. All right, so let's put this one on. Get my tape here, secure it to the mug. And I will secure it on this side as well. So one of the things that I did read is that you need to have blowout paper um, on top of your regular sublimation paper. I don't usually do that with the mug press. So I don't know, I guess some people said that your design sticks in the oven. So that's why I decided to get some of the blowout paper. So this is just butcher paper and I've already cut it down to size. So I'm gonna tape that on. This tape doesn't wanna stick to me. All right, this one is ready. Let's do this one. I've got the same design. And I'm gonna center that. Let's see, Let's see what everyone is saying to me. I'm so glad you guys are trying this out. Like I said, I'm not really sure if it's going to work. If it doesn't, I'm very sorry. I tried my best. <laughs> I hope it does. All right, and we're gonna put the blowout paper on here as well just so that it doesn't stick to it. So I'm gonna just use the heat tape on this one also. All right. This one is ready. So the, the oven is heating up so that it is preheated. I think for this first one, I don't know, I'll try this. So I got this little silicone sleeve on Amazon. Ah, this is what it looks like. And it's got the little metal clasp here. 
So I'm gonna try and put this on here. Let's see, I think it goes through like this. All right, and then we press until it kind of snaps closed. Oh, okay, so it snapped close. It's on there very tightly. All right, that looks good. So the next one is the sleeve. And I'm gonna put my heat glove on because they said it gets hot when you're doing the heat gun. So let's put this in here. Oh my goodness, I really hope this works. All right, so heat gun here. Let's try it out. <laughs> so it should shrink wrap to the cup. All right, oh, it's working. Okay, that looks good. Oh, that looks good too. Let's put it on this side. And they said it should be very tight. All right, let's get it on the handle. All right, guys. Make sure that side is really nice and tight. All right. I don't know. I think it looks good to me. So it's nice and tight to the mug. All right, I'm going to put this other glove on. Someone else told me, so let's see, the... The oven has been heating up, so I believe that it's ready. So I'm going to put this parchment paper down because I did read that sometimes the um, the shrink wrap paper, actually I want to make this a little bit tighter on the bottom because I want it to stand up. Hopefully I'm not going to ruin it. Okay. It said that the shrink wrap paper could stick to the grates in the oven, so that you should put some parchment paper down so it doesn't stick. All right, so I'm gonna put this in. I've got the oven set up. Ah, it's already burning the top. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now y'all, this is the first time I'm doing this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can slide it out. There we go, we'll do that. And then I'm gonna put this one in. Let's see. Okay. I think they're good. All right, they're not touching the top. Perfect. I'm gonna close it. Okay, and I'm gonna set my timer for six minutes because it's, shoot, where's my timer? It said that I should switch the position of the mugs um, after I put them in there. So I'm gonna put them in there for six minutes, switch their position so they can both get evenly heated, and then I will do another six minutes. So while we wait for that, I can answer any questions that you all might have um, about sublimation. Um, let's see, who's here with me? I'm so excited that you guys are here with me and trying this out because I have to admit I'm a little bit nervous. But so far, so good. Just burn a little top a little bit. Um, so let's see. So the sublimation paper, maybe you want to know about that. Let me show you. I am using the a sub paper today where did you get the shrink wrap I got the shrink wrap on Amazon and I will put that in my um, in the link or in the in my bio or whatever somewhere after this video is over so you can see exactly which one I got actually we don't even know if you're gonna want the one I got we'll see if it works first and see if you guys want it um, the best sub shirt I really like um, next level brand this one is next level it is because it's the 65 percent poly um you know the sublimation shirts the higher poly count that you have the better so 100 percent is going to be the best but no one really wants 100 percent poly shirts because they don't really feel very good so this one is 65 percent poly and it washes really well and it um it feels really good so what do you use to color design over so that when you sublimate it, it doesn't bleed over to your heat press to cover the design? I use butcher paper, um, just regular butcher paper, and I get that on Amazon, but you, know, you could get that wherever. Um, have you tried Bella Canvas? Bella Canvas does not have um, the high poly count tees. 
They, I do love them for just regular teas because they're really good teas, but most of them are 100% and they've also got the tri-blend, but their tri-blend I believe is only maybe like 40% poly and that is not enough poly because for sublimation, the ink adheres to polyester and not to cotton. So if you're doing a shirt that is only like 40% poly, that means all of the ink is gonna wash out of all that cotton, the rest of it. So if you've got like a cotton rayon tri-blend or poly tri-blend, it's not gonna work very well. So I don't use Bella Canvas. What app do you use when designing? I, <laughs> I use a lot of apps. Typically I use Cricut Design Space. Um, sometimes I use Silhouette because I find that some of the features in Silhouette make it a little bit easier to design, like with, with the words. You know, in, um, in Cricut Design Space, you have to, um, you know, separate the letters and then group, ungroup them, put them all together. Um, in the so in the silhouette, you don't have to do that. All the words just print out the way they're supposed to print out, and I love that. So that saves me a lot of time when I don't have to ungroup words and bring them together. Um, and then. Let's see, Cricut, I use because I, I have a Cricut machine. I do not have a Silhouette Cameo. But the Cricut machine also has some, um, you know, restrictions with size. So when you're making a bigger size shirt, like um, LAR or XL, you know, you need your design to be like 10 inches wide. Um, you can't do that with Cricut Design Space. So I also use, 100% of the time when I'm de designing something for sublimation, I'm going to be using the silhouette because I don't have the size restrictions. Uh, let's see. All right, back to the paper. One, the A sub paper. I use A sub and I also use Haze. So both of those I really like. How do you determine what you keep in your inventory for blanks? <laughs> that is a challenge. I, I try to just keep um, a couple sizes of the colors that sell the most. Now that I've been selling some, I know kind of what are the popular colors and sizes. So I try to keep not too many on hand. Um, the place that I order, if I order by um, two o'clock PM, then I get them the next day. So usually I try to just um, keep some on hand. If I have to order last minute, then I will, but I try to, you know, I don't really want to pay shipping for every order. So I try to keep a couple of each size on hand. Um, let's see, how much time is that? We have a minute left in the oven and I'm gonna be switching them. Um, let's see, the, what else? Oh, for printers. Um, I, people have asked me a lot what printer I have. I have the Epson, it's the 2720. And I also have the Epson 15,000. Can you sublimate on dark fabrics? You cannot sublimate on dark fabrics. So that is um, kind of the challenge with sublimation because it's very picky about what you can sublimate on. It's gotta be polyester and it's gotta be light. So I have found some colors with Next Level. There are about six or seven colors that I use. I, um, if you're gonna be printing with black, it will print like the green, the gray, the paprika, those colors print really nicely with if you're just doing a black design, but if you're doing many colors, I would stick with white and gray because those sub the best. What type of convection oven is that? It is an Oster, an Oster oven. Um, oh, time is up. Okay, hold that thought. Let me switch them around. Let me put my gloves on. I don't want to get burned. Gosh, I hope you guys are working and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh my goodness, this thing is burning. Okay, let me see if I can pull it out a little bit more. All right, I'm not doing this very gracefully. Sorry guys, but this is real. This is what it looks like. I hope when I open them up, they're gonna be beautiful. All right. Another six minutes, cool. Let's see what else. How can I get my colors nice and bright on sublimation because I just got my printer and the colors are so light. Um, when you print out, um, the colors are always light. It never is bright when you print it out. So don't judge 
that with your finished product product um so you print it out it's going to be light when you sub it and you put the heat on it and it's finished that's when the colors brighten up so don't worry about if it's light just try it first before you determine that it's not working um what else was i saying before i was talking about paper and oh and sub sub what what you can sublimate on so these mugs are specially um, designed for sublimation you cannot sub on a mug from the dollar store dollar store mugs are great for um, vinyl but you cannot sub on them because it won't the the ink just won't even go on to it i accidentally did one one time and the, i mean it doesn't even look like you did anything because the ink just doesn't go on to those mugs unless they are coated with that special sublimation um coating um sorry let me see if i can zoom back up i think there were a couple questions which place do you order um i order my t-shirts from mission and printables and I also order them directly from Next Level online. You do have to have a reseller account in order to do both of those though. You normally use a heat press for your mugs. How much time do you leave them pressed for? When I use my heat press, I press them at 380 degrees and I press them for 240 seconds. Um, I kind of played around with that, with those um, numbers, but I found that that worked well. And I also use a fan when I take them out of the mug press. I don't think everyone does that, but for me it kind of worked better because I was having problems with um, some of the ink kind of bleeding out after I took them out of the mug press and kind of giving a shadow effect. So um, that was because when your mug is so hot and you remove your paper, the image, it's still kind of the sub, the, the ink is still in the sublimation process. And if it's not contained by the paper, then the ink will start to spread. So you wanna cool it down quickly so that the ink stops spreading at that point. Um, some people, you know, they say that you can dip them in water afterwards. I mean, I thought that that was a bad idea at first, but then people said they were doing it. So I thought, oh, I'll just try it. Um, it was a bad idea because I put it in the water and it cracked. So. I don't do that. I put it in front of the fan. Um, when you sublimate, it still comes on light on my white shirt. Is that, what can I be doing wrong? Oh, you're okay. So you've subbed it, you printed it out, it looked light and it still comes out light on your white shirt. I would say that you are not, your pressure is not good or your, um, your temperature is not good or your time. So there's three factors with sublimation because all of those need to be right on point for your colors to come out bright. Um, what I did to solve that, I took a shirt. I took one that I messed up on because you know there've been plenty of mess ups. I just cut it up into a bunch of um, pieces. I printed out my design. I just printed it out small, the design that I was trying to work with. I actually printed out a few and they all had colors and I wanted to see what it looked like on all of those different um, with those different colors. So I cut it up and I just took one piece, put it on my heat press and I did time, temp, pressure for that particular one. Tested out that image and I wrote what, what the time, temp and pressure was for that one. Got it up, tried to see what it looked like. Then I took another scrap, did the same exact thing, but I changed the time, temp and pressure and I wrote it on there so that I, actually, let me show you. Let me show you what I have. I can't find them right now, but I had just a stack of different um, pieces of scrap t-shirts, all with the design that I knew I wanted to use, but I did them all at time, different time and temps. So I found out which image was the brightest and which one looked best with my heat press. So it, every heat press is different and it's going to be a little bit different for yours. So you just need to find out which works best. So I think you're not using the right time, temp, or pressure. That's why it's probably coming out light. What's the difference between your mug press process and doing mugs in the oven? Well, it's, um, the oven is much longer. My heat press doesn't take as long in there, but one of the issues I'm having with my mug press is because it will only print, or I can only do 11 ounce size mugs. 
and I want to do different sizes. So that's why I thought maybe the oven might give me a little more flexibility in the size mugs that I can do. So that's why I'm trying it out. If you're not a reseller, where can you get the t-shirts? Um, Jiffy shirts, I believe. I have heard people get them from there and then sh maybe shirt space or something. I'm, I can't remember the other places. Um, but I know Jiffy shirts is one and I think they have pretty fast shipping. Let's see, where do you get your t-shirts? Again, I get them from Mission Imprintables or from Next Level, directly from Next Level. All right, the time is up. Oh my gosh, the big reveal. Let's see how it turned out. I'm a little nervous, guys. My heart is kind of racing because I don't want this to be bad for you. All right. I'm gonna do this one first because it does seem like it melted a little bit. All right, I'm glad I have these heat gloves. Supposedly, this is supposed to like tear off. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it comes off easily. Goodness. All right. Well, now I see why people use that because it did stick to my. Uh, my blowout paper. All right. I'm excited and nervous. Oh my gosh. Well, that one did not work. Oh, yeah, those colors did not really come out. Okay. So that was the shrink wrap. So I'm going to say that didn't work. All right. Let's try this one. Oh, guys, I hope I can show you something good today. Let's try this one. The big reveal. Ah, oh, guys, this, not a fan. Not a fan. This one didn't work either. I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, it looks good over here, but these sides... It must not have um, gotten tight enough. Oh, all right, back to the drawing board. So those did not work. Um, I think, I don't know, what I've heard people say is that the time, um, the time and temp might make a difference. So. This is, I guess I'll show them both up to you. Both, so you can see them up close, so you can see the difference. So here's the shrink wrap. That's what it did, not a fan. This one is better. Yes, it is better than the first one, but it's still, it, I mean, it's not like my mug press. My mug press is really good. So, I mean, I'd like to use this. I'd like to be able to make more than one, Let's see, nothing worse than a failed sub mug. I'm telling you, I'm, it's really, it's really annoying. But at least I know now, maybe turn them so they get more heat on the bottom. Okay, cause yeah, the, the top did work. Oh, so maybe I could flip them over and maybe that might be better. Maybe I start with them right side up and then flip them over. Maybe that could work. Do you know what setting I'd have to have my Cricut Easy Press on to sublimate correctly? You kind of like the faded edges? Well, that's actually, I was about to pick it up. Oh my gosh, I'm about to burn my hand. That's my brain. I don't even think. Um, the sub, the Cricut Easy Press, it needs to be, I mean, I usually use 400 for it to work. Uh, okay, yes, flip them. Okay, I will flip them. Were the closest part toward the door. Oh, that's true. Maybe I pushed them further back because they were right beside the door. All right, thank you guys. You're helping me figure this out. I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna try them again. Let's see, maybe turn them so they get more heat on the bottom. Um, the, easy, the easy press, I don't love it for sublimation because I, I mean, I did start out with that before I got my big heat press, but it, um, it moves. I had so much ghosting a lot of times using my 
easy press. You try not to move it, but if you move it just even slightly, you um, you can get ghosting and that's really annoying. Um, ghosting is when your design looks like it's got a shadow all around it. So it look, it's a double vision. So I found that my easy press was doing that with my t-shirts especially. I still use it like if I'm doing a makeup bag or something, I'll use my easy press just because the easy press is heat up a lot faster than the heat press. My heat press takes like 30 minutes to heat up. So um, the easy press, you know, it takes a few minutes. So I do like that, but I only use it if I'm making like um, really little designs. Like I, I don't do t-shirts with the easy press anymore. Teamwork, yes, teamwork, thank you all. I'm so excited, so I'm gonna try it again. I am going to flip it over halfway, see if that works. And then I'm also gonna push them further back so the handles are not so close to the front of the door. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. Um, so there you have it, my live. My project didn't quite work out as I had hoped, but you were all here with me. Let's see. Iron your wrinkled clothes with the easy press. Yes, you can. Um, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate the support. Um, I was nervous. Uh, let's see. When supplement 100% white polyester, I keep getting little fibers embedded in my shirts. I do lint roll before pressing. What can I do to prevent that from happening? Um, I, really, I was going to say lint roll. Um, I'm not really quite sure. Maybe you've got something on the top of your heat press. Maybe try uh, when it's off. Like, try and wipe that down. Maybe there's something on there that's causing it to have that. I have had little blue spots when I'm doing white, but I I don't get that. That was because I didn't do the lint roll. So I would try, if you've already done the lint roll, I would try wiping off your heat press. It's good to try new things. Thank you guys so, so, so much. I appreciate you all for your support and your non-judgment of my failed project. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. I think that's it. Um, I'm going to check back in with you guys, though. I will let you know. I'm going to try it again. Hopefully, I'll be able to post a picture of a good one. Let me see. Check the question box next time if you know how. Oh, I don't know how. Let me see. The question box. Oh, what's the difference between convection oven and mug press machine? Oh, okay. I did check the question box. Um, convection oven. This is the oven. Let me show you my mug press. This is my mug press. So the mug press is just for making sublimated mugs and it is um, only one mug at a time. So that that is the difference. This is the convection oven. Um, the mug press, I can do it more quickly and I can control the pressure a little bit more than those things. But like I said, I'm gonna try it again and see how that works. So thank you guys so much. Would the settings 445 seconds work for sublimation on the easy press? Um, yes, they do. That's what I, that's what I use. Um, some people say 400 is too high for some things, but I usually use the 400 because I've got some um, linen makeup bags and I do 445 seconds for those. So it works. Is it worth the money to own one? Uh, Lala, what are you talking about? The convection oven to own one of those or a heat press? Um, which one? I mean, obviously the convection oven, I just got it. So I don't know if it's worth it right now. I say no, because it's not working, but, um, maybe I'm going to try it again. We'll see. Um, the heat press. Yes. I love my heat press. I got that from heat press nation and Oh, the mug press. Oh, so heat press. Love it. Would definitely get one mug press. I mean, yes, I do really like it. I just wish that I wasn't, um, being restricted with the mug size. I wanna make more than just 11 ounce mugs. Like I'd like to make tumblers and I'd like to make the 15 ounce mug or I'd like to make um, little mugs. And this one only does the 11 ounce. So it has been worth it for me since I've had it, but I feel like I've outgrown it. So I want something else. So that's why I'm trying the convection oven. So hope that answers your question. Thank you guys. I hope that I answered all your questions. If I didn't, DM me. I really try very, very hard to answer all my DMs. 
and I think that's it. So I'm gonna go try it again, and because you know that's just me, I gotta get it right. <laughs> so I'm gonna try it one more time and see how it goes. But well, obviously I can't just leave it like that. I gotta test it out again and see maybe if I cook them um, individually and push them both back towards the middle of the oven and see if that might work. So I'm gonna try out the, um, the sleeve as well as the shrink wrap and, and see how it goes. So I'm gonna put masking tape around the top and the bottom for the shrink wrap one just to see if maybe that will prevent it from sticking so much to the shrink wrap. All right. melted big hole it's melted to this paper at the bottom I'm just not a fan of this at all all right but we're gonna see how the image looks I just don't like that it's melted all over everything all right it does look good they look well they look very similar they're both really good, much better than the last ones. But I'm gonna go, I mean, look at all this. Stuff all over the handle, it's just sticky. I'm gonna go with the silicone wrap. I think that is the winner. Here's the one with the shrink wrap done with the other mug. One with the silicone wrap done with the other mug. This is the silicone wrap done by itself. And this is the shrink wrap done by itself. And you can see the top is very burned. So in conclusion, I think that I am more of a fan of my mug press than the convection oven. Obviously, I probably need to test it out a little bit more to form a true opinion, but I feel like with the timing, I, my mug press takes a lot less time to create a mug and I don't have to do the blowout paper and then also put the sleeve on. I just put it in the mug press. So I think what I would prefer to do is just find a mug press that I can do multiple size mugs. If you're interested in seeing anything that I design and sell, remember you can always check out my website, thecraftybrick.com. On a totally different topic, if you happen to want to see me compete on a game show, check out this next video coming up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Stay crafty, my friends.